Hello and welcome to the Constitution Study. My name is Paul Engel. We are here to read and to study our Constitution so that we can return it to its rightful owners, we, the people of the United States. I'm glad you could join me here today. Have an interesting episode. We're actually answering a question from the website. Before we go there, if you are new to the Constitution Study, if this is the first time you have listened in, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for giving me a try. Hopefully you'll go back and listen to a couple of other episodes, um, get a feel for what we're doing here. We are focused on that idea of reading and studying the Constitution. And sometimes we're asked, I'm asked, why? Why should they bother reading and studying the Constitution? And the simple answer is to know what our rights are. As John Jay put it, uh, reading and studying so that we know what our rights are, we know when they are infringed, and we are prepared to assert and defend them. But most of all, most importantly of all, the reason we read and study the Constitution is so that we can teach the next generation and the generation after that to be free. We are losing our freedoms, and if we want to retain them, if we want to get them back, we're going to have to learn how, and that comes from reading and studying the Constitution. So, again, thank you for joining. Uh, I hope you'll thank whoever pointed you this way, and I hope you'll come back for more. If you are one of those returning listeners, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it is this dedication that will help keep this movement going, <clears throat> help see what is what is happening to our country, and understand that we have the legal authority to fix it if we will simply exercise it. And that's the biggest problem. I'm actually working on a couple of uh, articles and, and podcast episodes related to that, to that idea of, you know, do we have the wherewithal to actually enforce the laws that, that we have the legal authority to control our Congress, our government. So I'm glad you're here. All of you, I hope you'll head to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Uh, that's where you can find other episodes, other articles. Most importantly, you can ask a question. This episode comes from a question I received from a, a person on the website, and I thought it was so such a good question. Not only did I answer them directly, I'm doing a podcast episode on it. You too can ask questions. You can head over. You can find me on Facebook, on YouTube. I'm even on LinkedIn for all the work that I'm doing. I now have an Amazon author page. So if you go to amazon.com slash author slash Paul Engel, all one word, you will find the essays and, and booklets that I am writing um, <clears throat> available for purchase online. Also on the website, you can head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash constitution study. Help support the work that we're doing. Help you know pay for the, the, the podcast time, the work that needs to get done to make all of this happen. Um, I do this because I love it. I do this because I want my daughter to breathe free, but I can't do it alone and I need help. And whether that's money, whether that's questions, whether that's getting me engaged in other situations, I'm actually looking for opportunities to speak in front of groups of people. I live in the middle Tennessee area. So if it's that area, I'm local and uh, maybe we can set something up. Otherwise, contact me anyway. We'll see what we can do because this message is important and it really needs to get out. Um, I've had uh, several opportunities lately where people have come to me saying, uh, can you answer this question for me about the Constitution? And I, I love it. I, I, I love engaging in those and uh, I want to do that more. I have a unique opportunity right now or I have some extra time that I can do devote to this. So let's work on this together. Let's see what we can do. Hey, maybe you've just got a great idea, something I haven't thought of, something you'd like to see me work on or something we can work on together. Head to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Let me know. I'm more than interested in ideas. I don't claim to have all the ideas, but I love working with people that can help. Again, this is a team effort. And we need to get going. So today... <clears throat> Excuse me. I am actually uh, responding to uh, a question. Uh, a, a Maline B or Maline B. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Asked a question on the website, and I'm going to quote. Her question says, "Quote: Does having in God we trust on our money infringe on our constitutional rights? If so, which ones? Since there is supposed to be church and state separation, isn't money clearly related to the state, which therefore should be separated from church?" How is this beneficial in any way? Close quote. Well, Maline, this I thought was an excellent question. I responded to her immediately, and it was so good I thought I needed to write about it and I needed to, to podcast about it. And it's a, it's a good question. right? Does in God we trust 
on our money, infringe on our constitutional rights. Uh, and God We Trust is actually our national motto, passed by Congress. And Congress also had this put on our coins and eventually on our bills. And uh, it, it, it really comes down to this idea uh, that I think Melina is getting, Melina is getting to, and that is separation of church and state. So let's deal with that first, because the phrase separation of church and state is used over and over and actually misused over and over and over again because we don't understand where it comes from. Separation of church and state does not come from the Constitution. It actually comes from a letter written by our third president, Thomas Jefferson. You see, you see Jefferson was the first anti-federalist elected to, presid to the presidency. During the Constitutional Convention, there were two groups, two parties, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. And it's interesting because the Federalists were about a powerful central government and the Anti-Federalists were wanted a decentralized government. They did not want a powerful central government. So Jefferson gets elected. In 1801, he takes office. And being generally being Anti-Federalists themselves, the Baptists were quite pleased with Jefferson being president. There was one group in Danbury, Connecticut, though, that were concerned. So they wrote a letter to the president. They congratulated him on his electoral win. Then they expressed their concern that since they were a minority religion in their state, their freedom of religion could be suppressed by others. Jefferson's response to, to this was, quote, I contemplate with sovereign reverence the act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should, quote, make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, close quote, thus bringing a wall of separation between church and state, full close quote. You see, rather than being concerned about their, the infringing of their rights, Jefferson said the First Amendment built a wall of separation between church and state, thus protecting the church from state intervention. This is really kind of interesting because the First Amendment is the only one amendment in the Bill of Rights that says Congress shall. It is Congress. It's the only one focused on Congress. He says the legislature cannot pass a law uh, 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 basically, um, I want to get this right, he cannot pass a law establishing a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. In, in, in fact, the under, this understanding of the separation of church and state remained legal precedent until 1947. In other words, from 1789 to 1947, the understanding of, of the separation doctrine, as it's been known, was that the church was to be protected from interference from the state. In 1947, though, the Supreme Court uh, re reviewed the case Everson versus Board of Education. Now, again, Establishment Clause precedent for decades had said the state could not aid one religion over another. This decision, Everson versus Board of Education, barred assistance to any religious organization. This was the first time that I could find where courts used the separation doctrine to prevent religious organizations from participating in publicly funded services. For 160 years, the courts had recognized that governments could not favor one religion over another. Now, however, even the hint of anything religious has to be viewed with a prejudiced eye by any public official. Thank you once again, Supreme Court. So what about this in God we trust on government-issued money? Does that violate our rights? Well, the only right I could think of that could possibly be considered a violation is the Establishment Clause, which says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Congress can't create a religion. They can't establish it through law. But does putting the phrase in God we trust establish a religion? Now, the 1828 Webster's Dictionary defines establish as to found permanently, to erect and fix or settle, to enact or decree by authority or by preeminence, to make firm, to confirm, to ratify what has been previously set or made. You may ask why I use the 1828 Dictionary, because it's the one closest to the founders. It's the one closest to the actual writing of the Bill of Rights. So I ask you the question, does putting a generic phrase about God on our money make the worship of God permanent? Does it enact or make permanent a religion? Does it ratify the worship of a particular deity? 
Does it require you or the government to give money to a particular religion? The answer to all those questions is no. I believe putting in God we trust in our money provides two positive, completely constitutional influences. First, it should remind those in government that we are endowed with certain unalienable unalienable rights by our Creator. They are not authorized to violate those rights. They are not the big gun in the room. There is somebody above them. Since the vast majority of Americans believe in God, according to a 2016 Gallup poll, 89%, believe in God, the use of God rather than creator, quite appropriate. So it it, it establishes that government has a limitation. Our rights are not given by government. Therefore, we, you know, they can't take, they can't take them away. The second advantage is a reminder to all Americans that we are to put our trust in God or whatever creator you believe in rather than government. We are not to put our trust in government. Government is for lack of a better word, a necessary evil. It is how we establish how we interact and then enforce that by force at the point of a gun. And I think by putting in God we trust, our national motto on our money reminds us you're not supposed to trust in government because guess what? They fail. If you look at how government does things, it's a mess. Pretty much want to put something screwed up, hand it to the government, it gets screwed up. So no, putting the phrase in God we trust does not violate any of our constitutionally protected rights. While I am sure there are people in America who do not like the phrase and wish it would be removed, there is no unalienable right to not be offended. It's impossible to have a right not to be offended because you you could not legitimately use that right except to infringe on somebody else's right. No, if we are going to live in a free society, we have to recognize that we will sometimes be in the minority and have to allow others their wishes, even if they are not ours. If the majority of Americans believe in God and have expressed that desire to trust in him on their money, as long as they do not force others to believe so, then they should be allowed to do so. Those who do not want our national motto on our money should go through the legislative process to get it removed, just as those who wanted it there did. And if they cannot get the representatives of the people to pass such legislation, they should be, be thankful they live in a country where they have the chance to change the law and where they are not required to support a religion they do not believe in. So, you know, that's my point of view on In God We Trust and, uh, you know, concerns that it's infringing on our rights. Uh, it, it doesn't. You know, it, it's, we're back to this. Well, if I'm offended by something, it's my right to not be offended and that's just not true. You do not have a right to not be offended. You don't even have a right to be free from religion because the only way to not be to enforce that type of right of, to not be offended or to not have to see religion is to infringe on the rights of others. And that is what our government is supposed supposed to protect us from, the infringement on our rights. So I, I hope you enjoy this malign. I hope this helped you. Um, I hope to hear more questions from you and from others. Uh, it, again, it was this is the type of interaction that I like. I like when people ask me questions and I have a chance to do a little research and, and get back to them. I hope you'll join me. I hope this made you think. I, I hope you'll come up with some questions for me. Most of all, I hope you will join me in reading and studying our Constitution. Uh, I, it, it's, it is the, the – every time I've read the Constitution with people – and we start seeing what how many of our rights are actually being infringed. It, it's enlightening, and it gets people awakened and looking at what's going on. I hope you'll join me. I hope we create this wonderful team where we can go out, we can read, we can study, we can again begin to recognize that our rights are being infringed and that we will be prepared to defend and assert them. We'll be prepared to take control of our Constitution again so it can actually be used for what it actually says— not what somebody wants it to say. So uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you will continue to interact. Go to the, to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Uh, sign up for the website. You will get my latest essay. Uh, I think by this time, you, uh, we should still be putting out uh, the de- reading the declaration. So you'll get to read, um, go through me as we read through the declaration, understand why we formed this country. Uh, I hope you'll support the work that we're doing here. I hope you will join me in the work that that we're doing here. 
And I hope to see you again the next time on the Constitution Study.